Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down the layers of a pop country track. So if you're someone who wants to learn how to produce pop country, this is the video for you. What's up y'all, my name is Forrest Whitehead. I created this channel to help songwriters and producers make better sounding records at home. Today we're working on a production that I'm working on and I wanna solo up each of the instrument layers and kinda of show you guys what's happening in here. All right, so for kit number one, I have by Mixwave, the Mario De Planner kit. This is the way it sounds. It's the fast metal preset. I love the way this kit sounds, but what takes it to the next level here is if I just duplicated the same MIDI track down, and now I also have the Thomas Prison Drums, the Big and Roomy preset. So that's two separate MIDI stacks with two separate drum kits, both made by the same, they're both, the, both these drum kits are made by Mixwave. Y'all check out those drums. They're some of the best out there. But layering these two kits together, check out what it sounds like. This is just the Thomas Prison. Again, this is the Big and Roomy preset. That's exactly what you get, a Big Roomy sound. So layering this Roomy sound, with the way that that Mario to Planner kit cuts, like that's what's pretty much carrying my drum sound through throughout this thing. And of course, I just drug a couple of crashes. I have a tambourine here. Looks like I have some a pan man on this tambourine, kind of doing a a weird thing to kind of hit you at a different perspective each time, which that's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and hop to the last chorus here because usually there's a lot of magic that happens on that last chorus whenever it comes to just making your track really big. So I've got a down lifter, a crash, a couple extra things, a riser here. Let's hear how this sounds. All right, so that kind of lift right there with the drums, we've just got a simple sweep. Big down lifter, a hits crash, some shakers happening. And again, having those layered drums really makes a difference, I think. So moving on from the drums, let's go to the guitars now. And I wanna show you guys the layers of electrics that I have happening here. And one thing interesting is in this course, and I love doing this with the guitars, if I want a part to really stand out, sometimes it's just doubling up that one specific part with more guitars just for that moment in the song. Take a listen to what's happening on this lick here. And so whenever I play that back, it's kind of perceived as just like two guitars, you know, whenever you hear it in context with a mix for sure. But what's happening here is I've got extra layers of guitars going on and What's really bringing them to life are these strat layers. Really nasty, dirty tone there. This is on the Amplitude plugin, and this is with the Marshall JCM Slash uh, amp. And I, I love the way it sounds. It's really dirty, uh, and having this part doubled up just does something extra to this chorus here. It just brings these guitars out of the mix. So let me play it without those extra strat guitars and let you guys hear like what it's missing. All right, so whenever you double up guitars on a certain lick, that's what pulls them out of the mix. Check out what happens whenever I add these guitars back. Now, whenever it comes to acoustics, they have like a really high energy in the mix. So you're tempted to kind of layer those all throughout. Like if you want your track to be big, it's like, let's just stack more acoustics. Well. I've learned that sometimes taking the acoustics away can really create a cool contrast in the mix. So listen to what happens here going into the solo section. Everything in purple here is the acoustics, and you can see that everything drops out on the solo section. The electric guitar and a fiddle is going to take over for that solo section, but I just want you to hear the dynamics of these parts here. Here's the solo section.
All right, so what I want you to pick up on here is whenever there's a big solo in a song, and it's especially something like a fiddle that is doing a lot of notes, that's going to pull the ear, uh, you know, and take a lot of attention. So what you don't want is to layer up all these high-end instruments that are also trying to steal the attention from the star of the show. And the star of the show on this track is definitely that fiddle part. So I, I don't want anything else on the high-end frequency messing with that while that's happening. So whenever the solo is happening, I pull out all my acoustics and bring them back on the bridge. So whenever I steal the acoustics from the production for a second, really let the song breathe on that solo part and then bring them back, it brings the energy to this bridge that I just love because it builds it right back up to break down on this, this down course. Check it out. Also wanted to point out, there's not a lot of synths on this song, just this one part right here that's just kind of building this energy, this high-end energy that happens right before this last chorus. And then it kind of releases at the top of this chorus, which it, it kind of helps this thing build. So a lot of the times it's tempting to like put like a pad or something all throughout your song. But again, it's like sometimes it's just having less of it in your production. That way when it does show up, it makes a difference. Yeah, whenever I take out that fiddle, there's pretty much nothing happening here. Just some guitars, a bass. Let me actually go to the guitars. We have some interesting guitars happening here. So... Looks like I have a guitar rig preset or something happening on this one. Really kind of ambient sound. That's called nervous ambience. That's the presetting. I love guitar rig for these type of sounds. And back to my point of only adding these sounds whenever you hear for them, that really brings like an ambience and opens up the track a lot. But it only happens once. We only have that tone happening in the solo section. So. Listen for that sound right there to come in. Notice how the electrics kind of dry up there, and as we go into the bridge, the acoustics really take over. But there's not many tracks here that make up this production, and it really starts with just having great quality samples, especially when it comes to your drums. Hey, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like, maybe that subscribe button. And also, if you want more in-depth content like this, if you want to learn how to produce pop country tracks, you should check out MusicCityPlaybook.com. I hope to see you there, and we'll see you guys in the next video.